Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today I thought I'd have another go at doing quite a complex cane. This is a very stylized flower, um, an iris flower. I'll take you through the whole process starting from when we condition the clay all the way up to getting it through to this finished piece. This is a slow process so the vast majority of it will be fast forwarded but I'll stop every so often to explain what I'm doing and why and hopefully give you some tips and techniques throughout. As all we're doing is making a cane, the equipment you need for today's session isn't very much, but you will need a polymer clay blade, I often refer to these as tissue blades, a little craft knife, a couple of sizes of knitting needles, or oh, this is actually a cable needle, we're just going to use these to create grooves in our piece, and exactly the same with the rollers to give you bigger sizes um, and to put curves and all sorts in the cane as we make it. Cocktail stick just to mark the clay in a couple of places. And then for the actual design we're using, you'll need a piece of um, acetate. I just get these off packets of things which come with a clear acetate, big enough to put your design on, and I'll come onto that in just a minute. Um, and then a pair of scissors, just some plain white paper and pencil or pen to draw your design. I'm going to use a ruler to measure things, and I'm also going to use a couple of rulers to help reduce the cane later on, which you'll see me doing. I use a measuring sheet just to mark out the clay, but also at times to work on it. It's handy to work on something that you can move and manipulate. And this is freely available from www.printablepaper.net. I've got a big tile that I'm working on, or say a smaller tile, whatever size you've got. Wet wipes and tissues, just clean your hands and your work surfaces as you go along. And of course, a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. That really does make a huge difference in what we're going to do today. For the design we're using, I drew myself a rough design of an iris and then just coloured it in to give me a, a good idea of the shading and what we're going to do and where I need all the bits and pieces to go. This is actually a reverse of that because what I do is I check the size of this as we go along and then I'll turn it over to check that the other side of the cane we're making is the same. All I've done is just print it out on bits of paper, I just cut them out and so taped them to the back of the acetate sheet so I can constantly put the clay down on this, take it off, put it down etc etc. And this is freely downloadable, both the coloured version and the plain version, on my website and I'll put a link to that in the details below. But obviously you don't have to do an iris for this tutorial. You can use the tips and techniques I'm doing to do whatever you like. And also you don't have to do these colours. I've gone very stylized here. Um, just take a little pinch of salt with what you actually see in nature and really emphasising all the variations in the colours just to make it easier to do the Skinner blends. But you can do a much more um, natural look if you prefer. Okay, so that's the design. That's all the equipment we need. So let's move on to the clay we're going to use. So for today's session I'll be using Kato Poly Clay. This is a nice firm clay and I'll be using an awful lot of it. Um, I'm going to be using probably the equivalent of about three blocks, so 36 ounces, so an awful lot of clay. And I'm using just the plain colours and then I'll mix them up as I need to. And I'm using blue, purple, cerise, black, um, turquoise green and an awful lot of yellow with just a little bit of red um, in there as well. So what I'm going to do is I will condition all of my clay thoroughly and if you're unsure how to condition clay I do have a video tutorial showing you how to do that and I'll put a link to that in the video details below. I'm using Kato poly clay because it's nice and firm so when I create the design it'll stay pretty pristine when I reduce it down however because it's firm it is of course very hard to reduce and it's hard on your hands so if you suffer from arthritis or something like that then do use one of the other brands of clay one of the softer brands of clay um, they'll be much easier for you to reduce the cane so don't be put off by doing a big cane simply because clay like this is hard use a softer one so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to condition all of my clay and put it through on a medium setting of my pasta machine. I'm going to put it through on setting number three and on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. And I'll bring you back when I've got all my colours conditioned and ready to go. So the first thing I've done is I've conditioned a whole load of clay all in the colours that I'm planning to use. So I've looked at roughly the colours that I want and if you look uh, you'll notice that I've actually shaded it all to effectively make Skinner blends 
lots of little individual Skinner blends from the bit in the middle here all the way down the outside here to these leaves and even the little bit of a leaf and a stem that I've added down the bottom. So I've just conditioned all of the basic colours so far. So I've got black and green, purple, blue and cerise, turquoise, yellow, red and orange and then twice as much white as all the other colours. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making Skinner blends. And one of the reasons why, although it's a pain, I get all the clay conditioned all at the start and I try and also condition more than I think I'm going to need is so that it's all conditioned and all at the same um, amount of elasticity um, and feels the same when you're working with it. Because that means that when you start to put your cane together, it's all going to be able to be reduced together because it's going to be the same amount of um, stickiness and have the same amount of movement within it. So I'm going to start with this very bit in the middle here. So I'm going to start with the yellow bit, then move on to this blue and then this piece, and then probably these leaves and move around to these, do those little yellow bits and then finally work on the bottom leaves here. So starting with this very first bit, if we break that down, the red to the orange to the yellow, it's actually quite a simple Skinner blend and I will start doing that. If you're not sure about Skinner blends, I have a video tutorial on that taking you through hints and tips and techniques on how to get nice, smooth and even Skinner blends. And I'll put a link to that in the details below this video description. But we'll start with, I'm just going to make a little Skinner blend from the yellow, the orange and the red. So we don't want a huge amount of this, so I haven't taken two bigger pieces, but I've got more yellow than anything else because obviously the orange and the red are going to move over into that. So I'm going to do diagonal cuts through the yellow and the red, a straight one down through the orange, and then turn the yellow round like that, the red round like that. Those two are going to go in the middle. And I'm really not worried about the fact that that's too short at the moment because that will all come out in the wash when we start to do our Skinner blend. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold those two bits over like that. I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine, fold first, and these are all done on setting number three, so now I'm going to move up to setting number two because we've got four um, sheets of that, and I will carry on putting that together until it comes into a nice Skinner blend. So there we go. So I know from my picture that I actually want a bit more yellow than I do the orange or the red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the red from the end. So I'm adding, and I've cut it double because obviously that was um, setting number three, a little bit of white because I want there to be quite a bit of difference between the colour on the outside of this Skinner blend and the start of this underneath blend here. So I'm adding a bit of white and I'm going to put it back through until I get a nice blend with that white added in on that end. So there we go. I also chopped an extra bit of the orange out and then melted it together. And I don't want it all the way through where it goes through to the white, but I do want it to the pale yellow. So that's going to be our nice blend for the middle bit. So I'm just going to fold that in half and put it back through the pasta machine. And that was on the same setting. And now I'm going to put it through on my thinnest usable setting to give myself a nice long thin strip. Having done that, we're just going to concertina it from one side through to the other. Now in my, in my design I've got this middle piece here but I've also got these two pieces here so I'm going to take off probably about a third of it and put that aside to work for those two pieces later on. And this piece we're going to use to do our middle bit here. So. We've got yellow on the outside and then we've got red on the inside. But we also want the yellow to go all the way down to that side and the red to be less. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half and then move it over. So I'm actually going to chop away the extra red bit and orange bit we've got all the way down that side. Change 
change the shape of it. And now when we chop it into two, pull it together and that's starting to look like the piece we got in the middle. So all I need to do now is to make this the right size and the right height for what I'm working on to fit into this space. Now I'm going to go, if I can, to about that wide, so probably sort of getting out of it, so two and a half to three inches in height, so that I have a nice bit that I don't have to reduce that much down and to get a really nice um, cane out of. So I will start to reduce that simply by pulling and pushing it until it is the right size. And when I've got it the right size, I'll check both this size and then turn it over and check the other uh, side to make sure it matches on both sides. Because I'm doing such a long length, I need to check that I've got the same profile from one end all the way through to the other and that it's the same all the way down the length and when I'm happy with it I can put that on one side. Now whilst I'm here I might as well do these two tiny little pieces simply because the clay is nice and soft at the moment because obviously I've just worked with it so I'll get these two done so they're roughly the right size so we can slot those in later and for these it's literally a case of taking this and making it smaller and just reducing it down till it's the right size and again the right length for the piece we're working on. So to do these two pieces I've made up a couple of Skinner blends. So this one's going to be quite dark at the base here where it goes up next to the piece that's going to have white around the top of it to create a nicer contrast. And I'm going to do that more so than in this picture creating contrasts as we go through to give you a really three-dimensional look to the piece. So if we start with this one that's going to hoop around the end of the yellow piece here and I actually want the black to come slightly around this edge as well. So I'm going to pull it around And then we'll make it to the right height, right shape, and then we'll sort of create a dent or a groove where we can then sit this piece into. So I'll carry on doing that. So now the next piece to do is this piece in here. So for this one I'm going to use a yellow through to the cerise and then a very light um, purple. So I'm going to mix some of the dark purple with some white to do a light purple around the outside. And we want a little bit of line in this. So I'm going to do something very slightly different when we get to the stage of doing this one. So I'll get the Skinner blend going first from the yellow through to the cerise through to the light purple. So I've done our blend all the way through on the colours, put it into a nice oblong and I've just added a little bit of extra of the darker purple just so that when we start moving things around you get a little bit of extra definition. So I'm just going to cut this a little bit down the sides 
not too much. And take off any excess at the end. Get away any bubbles. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this into strips. Doesn't really matter how many, but I happen to have done five. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to push the ends to make them more pointed. And put them back together, just very slightly staggered. And then we'll carry on doing that we get this sort of look where we have a nice graduation from one colour through to the next. Now I'm happy with the amount of graduation, amount of stripes I've got, I can start making it into this um, shape and size to go here. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to flatten out this bottom bit and then we'll make this bit tapered and then we'll elongate it until it fits over the top of our blue bit. So the next bit we're going to do is this bit at the back and then we'll do those two little bits so we end up with this nice shape in the middle. And for these two bits and this one, I already have the Skinner blends that I made when I was doing these two bits. So I will carry on using those and do these bits in here. So these bits will be the dark one. And then this bit I'm actually going to do, I'll put it on its side. So let's break it down into several individual little Skinner blends and put them all together to make this bit. So starting on the next bit, I've done my two Skinner blends and I've got one with very light colour and I made up in myself a light colour of the blue so it's not anywhere near as dark as what we've used previously so it's going to be a nice contrast when it goes up against the side. And then also for the little bit just at the top here, I've done myself a slightly darker blend as well so that when it sits, you can see it's sort of going to be darker than that. So this piece, as before, I'm going to do it separate little Skinner blends. So we've got one up to the dark piece here another one there and then a much larger one that just goes up to there and then this little one to go in the top and I'll make it in a very rough sort of arc shape 
to start with and then we'll curl it into the shape we need and add it onto that side. So I'll start working on that. So when we're going to do this piece, we've actually got to curve it round this little bit. So in order to make this bit more stable, I'm going to do this piece next, so that we've got a nice rounded piece on the end here for when we put that piece in. So I've created a Skinner blend, slightly different colour as per my drawing, one slightly more turquoise, I added a tiny bit of um, yellow into the turquoise itself to make it slightly greener, so we do this little bit. But in order to make a separation, all the way from here, all the way down to here, I've just made up a mid blue colour which is a mixture of the blue and the turquoise and then I'm going to run that all the way down to about to here so that when we add these other petals on it gives a separation between the petals. And then with these I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with this. So we've got a, a Skinner blend going one way and then the other so I'll simply cut this in half, put it together so that the two dark bits are together and then create this sort of shape and add this one in. So the next bit to do is this bit round here and I've already got my Skinner blends ready, similar to the ones I did here and I'll do it exactly the same way, just figuring out where the Skinner blends are. I've got a little bit of this more turquoisey one which I did that piece with, which I'll do this piece with on top of that and then I'll do a finer, slightly darker Skinner blend to do the three outside pieces and then that's the top of the iris all ready and complete.
So there we go, that's the top bit finished. Not perfect by any means, and obviously the colours are quite a lot darker than in my picture, which, so these three may end up being a little bit too dark, but I just wanted a bit of contrast in there just to show between the leaves, and hopefully once this bottom bit starts to go on, it will make more sense. So the first thing I have to do for this bottom bit is mix up all my various colours because I'm not going straight purples here I'm going to use some purple with some cerise in also a little bit of the red in so I'll do that mix up colours and then I can start doing my Skinner blends for all of these and then I'll also mix up we've got a yellow and orange and some white in here so again I'm going to need to do a Skinner blend for those so I'll get the Skinner blends done and bring you back when we've got all that bit sorted this is the colour I made from using the purple with a bit of the cerise and some of the red, so it's a nice sort of mid, sort of mauvey type colour. And I use this with the purple, white and a little bit of the black to make myself a nice Skinner blend. And I did twice as much because the first bit I've already put down into our normal block of colour there, where I can start using that to create these bits around the side. And I've got my extra bit here, which I'll also make up into like this to finish off the bits that go around there. I then made a Skinner blend using white, yellow, orange, red, a little bit of yellow in between into white so that the red didn't go to pink, it went sort of more orangey before it went into white, and then a little bit of this colour just on the outside so that when we do this bit, this purple is going to help it blend nicely into the bits below. What I then did, this was all nice and square, I actually chopped off a little bit of the white, the yellow, the orange and then curled around this underneath bit so that it goes around the sides a bit like it does in this bit here. Now I'm only going to work on effectively half of this bit and I'm going to cheat slightly because of whatever I put on this side it's going to be a mirror image on this side. Now I know it's not in real life but it just saves um, doing twice the amount of work. So what I'm going to do to start with, I'm going to insert this purple colour in lines and stripes down through this one, all the way down through here. Now what will probably happen is that it won't be completely even as it goes down this side and that's perfect because then when I elongate this and cut it into two to match it up, of course it doesn't matter that this bottom bit isn't exactly the same as this side. So the first thing I'm going to do, and before I start doing anything else, my craft knife, I'm just going to mark in lines on this one where I want to cut down through, so that when you put your lines in it's very easy then to put it back together and see where the next lines are going to be. I'm then going to put this down onto um, a thin setting, uh, it's number three at the moment, I'll probably put it down onto setting number six, and then I'll start adding in, cutting all the way down through this, either with my craft knife or the blade, depending on how much of a curve I can get on the blade and how much I need to do. Add in all the little stripes, and then as I say, once they're all in, we can elongate this, cut it in two, put it together, and that will give us our bit around there, and I will then cut out a triangle so that it will fit around the bit there of the iris. Okay, so those are all the inset lines. Um, as you see, it's quite difficult at times to keep an eye on where all the bits fit back together. It's a bit like sort of trying to fit a jigsaw together, even with those lines marked on. And the final piece, I've just put a piece down the inside, but I put it through on my thinnest setting, because when these two halves go together, that's going to be double the thickness, so I didn't want this line to be that much thicker than all the others. So what we're going to do now, we can reduce it in a long shape, and when it's twice the length of our piece, we can chop it in two, see what we've got, put the two pieces together and hopefully it'll be enough to fit round here and give us this piece.
So last but not least, we've got these little bits here to add in with the purples. So we've got some very dark colour to go in here. So I've done a cane like that from black through to purple with a little bit of the um, that new sort of purpley colour we made up for the iris. And then for these bits on top, which are actually going to be quite light, I've done another cane just from the purple with the um, made up um, colour in the middle and then going through with a bit of white as well to get a nice blend going through. The other thing I'm going to do is when I put it onto the main piece here, I'm going to add some little sort of dents in the side here to create these sort of bits where it goes in here and add some very dark bits, whatever I'm happening to use on this cane will go in there, just create those dents. This side hasn't got so much, so I don't need to do anything for that. So get those last bits done, get them on, and then of course we can add, put them, push these little yellow bits down onto them because they're the bits that sit on top of those. And then apart from the stem and the leaf bit here, our cane is nearly finished. So there we go, there's most of the flower finished, obviously I've still got to do the, um, the leaf and the petal. And then when I add the background in, I can spend a bit of time adding some of the extra detail, little, little flutes down this side, make sure that these bits are actually sticking out in the right way, where they should be. And the same with all the top bits when I cover the whole thing in some form of background. So next thing to do is to do the leaf and the stem. And for that, very again, very simple, skin and blend from whites to yellows to the green possibly even a little bit of blue in there just to give it a darker shade one simple skin and blend for the stem and then skin and blend just doubled up to make the leaf so once that's done then the next thing to do is decide what background color we're going to choose So that's basically the main part of the cane finished. I'm not actually going to push the leaf and the stem on because what I now need to do is to pack the whole thing with an outside colour. And so what I'll do is I'll do most of that first and then pack this as well and then add this in just when I start to do this bottom pick because otherwise this will constantly fall about. So the first thing I need to do is to choose a colour. So my first thought had been to do a dark colour to set it all off, but I found it was too dark going around these bits. So I started experimenting by getting lots of bits of card out and having a look and seeing what colours I liked. I could go very vibrant. More muted. I could go light. And I do quite like the way that that brings out the colours. Not enough, con not enough contrast with the blue. And then I started experimenting with the greens. Quite like the dark green. Also the mid green, because that brings out both the darks and the lights. But also the very bright, because that really makes the whole thing sing and gives a nice contrast to all the colors. 
So what I need to do now is to mix myself up a nice light green colour. And I will do that in a very ordered way, putting all the clay through on the same thickness of my pasta machine and then measuring out a certain number of squares for each colour as I mix, put the mix together so that I know that I can always mix up exactly the same colour if I run out as I'm going round. So I'll get that started, find the mix of the light greens and then show you how I've put that all together and then I'll start filling in the back of the flower. So here's some of the clay which I'm going to use for the background colour and I've put it into um, long logs of clay and then I'll make it down into smaller ones. And what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to in, infill all the areas where it goes in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at all the shapes and break them down. So for instance to start with this little triangle here so I'll fill that bit in. Then I can do a little triangle out to here to fill that bit in and then fill a triangle out to there to fill that bit in. And I'll take my time and I'll look at the size of the gaps and the shape of the gaps in my drawing because this is my chance to really go back in and reshape any of these. And as I mentioned before, I've got the little bits in here so I can reshape a bit in here, add the green in to really create the shape that I want in my finished piece. So I will take my time doing that. This is a long process and once I've done all the inner bits then obviously I'm going to add a lot just to fill it out to make it a nice big oblong shape. And I will bring you back when I've got the whole thing outlined in this one shade of green. So once most of the small bits are all fitted in, I've got most of the detail done, I can now start filling out and blocking in the big bits till I end up with a nice rectangle of this light green clay around the iris. And I will carry on doing that and bring you back when it's done exactly the same way except bigger as you can see here, sort of like a big triangle going to go on here, another one here and then some different shapes to be filled in there. So after several hours work, I have packed all the way around the outside with the green. Now that did take a lot of time and a lot of clay, uh, more or less two of the really big packs of the yellow um, to get all the green done. But I spent a lot of time, as I said, going around all the edges, making sure I've added some extra um, shapes in, um, so packed the leaf in and got it about as square as I could, um, or oblong. And then the other thing I've done is I've put registration lines down the mm -hmm. side, so I've measured out it happens to be five inches, um, 12 and a half centimetres long and about just over three and a half or about eight centimetres wide. So that's the size of the finished piece. And the registration lines there so that when I start reducing this and we start elongating it, when it's on its side, it's going to be very difficult to see 
um, what's happening. But if, as long as I manage to keep these lines nice and straight, I know that it'll be reducing in the right way. And because I know the size of it, I know that I've got this many lines going that side and I know where the corner pieces are. When I try to reduce this cane, we are going to get a lot of wastage, which is where it distorts on either end, and that is just part of the process. You can mitigate it slightly by using cane caps, cane savers, and these are the blocks you can buy which just fit either end on the ends of your canes. You then reduce the middle whilst this end stays completely stuck to the clay. That means you get much less distortion right at this far end because it's all stuck to the clay. However, they're a little bit small. Um, for a cane this size. I will put a link to them however in the details below the video um, so if you want to go and get those use them because if you're using smaller canes they are fantastic. So what I have done is I've just got a couple of acetate sheets and these are just um, cut off packaging that comes from things I buy so ever I see a nice clean sheet of acetate I just quickly snip it off and I've done them so they're big enough to fit over the ends and what I will do when I do one more part of the process is actually fit these on either end and press it nicely down so that it sticks. How However, as you can probably see, if I tried and press this down at the moment, there's lots of places where I've got gaps where this top bit, and obviously the same is going to be on the bottom bit, is not completely straight. So I have two options. I can either fill in with odd bits all of this to make it nice and completely flat, or I could shave off to give myself a flat piece. And then I can stick on this sheet. And then once they're both on, like that, I can start reducing my cane by pressing in the middle, pressing in, pressing in. And that's a long old process. That's going to take probably a couple of hours at least to do. And obviously in the meantime, I will let it rest. So I should have said that first. Having got it already, I will let it rest probably for a day so that all the clay is going to move at the same um, speed because this outside clay will be softer now than the stuff I did originally right inside because that was three days ago now that I started working on that. So I now have the acetate sheets stuck down and I worked from the centre out to make sure there's no air bubbles. So hopefully the clay will stick to the sheets, both top and bottom. Just doing a last little check. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to start working from the outsides. Now, I'm going to turn it this way up, but effectively I'm going to use the sides of my hands to start with, and I'm pressing inwards, turning around and pressing inwards. What I'm hoping to get eventually is a nice waist. And once this starts to go to a waist, then I can start pulling it out and getting my hands in there and my fingers in there. This will take a lot of time to do, as I said, so I will not be... Um, doing this full time I'll fast forward a bit of it and then forward to where I get to the next stage etc etc all the way through to hopefully the point at which we can cut through the middle keep our fingers crossed and hope we've actually got a nice iris picture left Okay, moment of truth. So I've got it down to around three inches across there, which is what I wanted, because um, I'm going to make a couple of big pendants, hopefully, if this works out. So fingers crossed, you are going to see it at the same time as I do. Now, as you saw, I ended up using a roller. I used a couple of rulers um, to help press it in. And at one point, I got to the point where I knew this was becoming too distorted and it was too much in the way those big bits on the end so I took them off to make it easier to reduce it down so all we can do now is cut down through and see what we have and there we have our iris flower So 
there's the original cake which I cut in half, the big one. I've just taken off the bits of excess um, wasted clay on the far end where it will come distorted. And then here's a bit where I've actually reduced it quite a bit. Now when I cut through this there are quite a few holes and gaps where I've got bubbles trapped inside the Kato clay. But once you take a slice, of course you can very carefully just roll over where any air bubbles are and they come out. And of course having cut it in half, when I then reduce this half I could work from the distorted end upwards and effectively you then push any air bubbles out to the top. So there we go, that's the cane all finished and done. So here's a piece made up from that big slice of cane when I first cut it in half and as I mentioned any air bubbles I just simply, having taken the slice, just push the clay together to create this big piece. Having done it, I cut out a nice oval shape with my slice and then to give it a border, I've simply added an extra layer of dark purple clay around the outside. And all I'll do is I'm just going to drill a little bit of hole in the top and make that into a pendant. Or alternatively, of course, you could put a brooch fastening on the back and have it as a brooch or a pin. And just to show you that you don't have to stick with what you've got. So obviously when I was trying out all the different shades on the background, I went for green, but I did also quite like the pink. Um, didn't want to do the whole thing in the pink. When you do this, and this is taken from the smaller piece of the cane, just cut off a slice, cut all the way around the outside, carefully with a craft knife, cutting away all of the green, gave myself a layer of the pink, sat the cutout on top of the pink, marked around the outside of the cutout with a cocktail stick, and then simply cut away the pink, dropped in my cutout and then again smoothed over the top and this one I've just put on a curved piece you can see there the underside still has the image on it and again I'll just drill a little hole here and have a bale on top and create that into a pendant. So there we go there's a couple of options for you as to how to do what to do with your cane so you don't feel as though you have to keep the whole thing as it is because obviously it's got a nice big cane but experiment you can put loads of other bits and pieces you can have multiple bits cut out, add extra leaves, do whatever you want to do just to make it into something nice. So that's it, that was how to do a complex iris cane, um, obviously very stylized but why not, it's one of the things you can do with polymer clay. I hope you enjoyed that, as always thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe, I really do appreciate it. Hope to see you next time, bye for now, bye.